think about different scriptures that come to mind. Some people call them memory verses. I don't memorize anything. <laughs> I use them, and by way of use, I recall them. And as I recall them, then I propose them to people of some of the value of what I get out of them. And that's what I do with the Word of God. I don't sit down and have a memorization program or some type of topical memory index system that I sit down and say, oh, well, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, or whatever it may be. And I just use the scriptures, and they come to my mind as I use them daily, or as I coordinate my life accordingly about what I'm learning from that particular verse or portion of scripture. And as such, you know, God inspires me lots of times with different scriptures that I think about, different things that I ponder or consider in my life and make applicable to my life. And one of them was that, you know, he became poor that I might be rich. I've been thinking about that one lately because I've had to make some choices in my life recently. I've had to decide not to do things in order to do other things. And particularly in the ministry, I've had to choose not to get involved in money-making enterprises in order that I might be effective and do the things in the ministry that God has given me. And so I find that challenging, really, because on the one hand, I know how to make money. <laughs> it's never been that hard to do. You go do a job, you get paid. To me, the greatest reward there can be in some ways is the very aspect of here's a job you get paid to do and your reward is obvious at the end of the week or if you're working day labor at the end of the day you got what you did and labored for and it's such a great feeling of accomplishment because you got paid for what you did it's not always that way in the ministry you know you don't always you know you don't see things sometimes the way you think you see them you know you see them in a different light and sometimes in gardening the same way. I can put seed in the ground and I can water it and water it and water it, but until that turkey turns into you know, a little tomato and I pop it in my mouth, it's kind of a lot of work. <laughs> but in its season, since I got so many tomato plants, it's gonna be delicious. But you see, that's kind of the interesting thing about Jesus becoming poor that we could become rich. That we could become heir of all things because he gave up all things in order to become like us, poor in spirit or poor in our poverty or without God. And I find myself challenged by that right now in my life. Right now today, I'm challenged by that because part of me wants to go, oh, I'd rather have the world and its things, you know, to do. You know, doing different things and participating in it and getting involved, you know, like, like I could get more involved in church if I was working and doing things, you know, to earn an income. I could get more involved in other things, other enterprises. I could write or I could do some business things, you know, maybe work at home or, or work, you know, odd jobs or be, a, you know, independent businessman or a contractor or subcontractor. And I think about that at times, you know, and it crosses my mind. But then I, I consider some of the people that I've talked to, some of the people that I've walked with in Vidivo, some of the people that I've even watched the Vidivo myself and went, wow, I don't know who this may touch, but this is powerful stuff, this is good stuff. And I realized that I have been made poor, that you may be made rich, that the volume of my life's experiences as I have gone through them suffered in a lot of ways, but endured that suffering so that I could come out the other side with the praise and glory of God my Father, anointing me and appointing me to share those things that I witnessed with my own hands, examined with my own heart, lived through with my own life, and made applicable through the things that God has said that I should be as a testimony unto Him, that I could share with you and tell you the truth about what goes on in life. Wow! The intimacy and the personability of Jesus being able to relate that Ooh, I would give up my riches that I might become poor, that you may become rich in faith. And so I begin to understand this 
poverty of self choice as opposed to impoverished by circumstances he became poor that I may become rich and I have become poor that you may become rich and so I give of that with which I've experienced already receiving from God that I might likewise give unto you the same blessings that I received from God in the same way and so I'm beginning to comprehend this you know it's it's been a challenge lately because really the poverty is becoming more obvious daily and the challenge is more acute but you know in some ways it really isn't that poor because when I look about myself sitting here now right here in the summer you know here I am sitting in a t-shirt you know and it's open and I'm sure some of you are sitting there in your long underwear over your daily clothes over your winter coat <laughs> and freezing because <laughs> you're still in the winter storms or spring storms as it were and it's cold out but I've been brought into a pleasant place God has brought me to this place I have been made bountiful as you look around me by seeing the blossoms of these bushes that I grow pointing I forget what they're called <laughs> anyways and there are like huge numbers of them I mean it's almost like everything I put my hand to grows and flows and just seems to emanate life and have abundance with it and I find myself in my though I have been made poor to make others rich I find myself abundantly blessed in a lot of other ways that I can find myself at rest without having to worry about the rest of what some people think they need which are things or possessions or those opportunities they feel like they need to go on a vacation or they need to go on a Christian cruise or they got to go to Israel you know everybody should do an Israel trip once in life or on a mission and I've done those things you know and so now I find myself content though God may not bless me financially he has richly caused me in wisdom and grace to grow abundantly in the knowledge of who he is how he operates and what he does as well as the encouragement to continue on in faith with my father in heaven to grow more so intimate with him than I ever have before using the opportunity of this time that though be poor in spirit and making others rich in faith it also likewise is blessing me to grow in the knowledge of my father as well as his son so you see it's kind of a reciprocal thing it kind of works both ways you know in some ways I count all things but done for the excellency of the knowledge of the Son of God and his Father in heaven and I would suffer the loss of all things that I may attain to the knowledge of Jesus and to all that he has in store for me and yet part of me you know sometimes does do that little kind of you know, yeah but you know it'd be nice Lord you know? If I were a rich man, ya da 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 Oh, I would da 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 dum, and I da 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 dum. Yeah, wouldn't you? I mean, after all, if you were a rich man. But you see, having been made in the likeness and the form of Jesus, I think at this point in my life, I would become poor that perhaps you might be made rich I am your guide strength and help will come to you just trust me wholly fear not I am ever more ready to hear than you to ask walk in my ways and know that help will come man's need is God's chance to help I love to help and to save I am ever present in time of need. Man's need is God's golden opportunity for him of letting his faith find expression. That expression of faith is all that God needs to manifest his power. Faith is the key that unlocks the storehouse of God's resources. Faith opens the door where man has but to ask and he shall receive. 
My faithful servants, you long for perfection and see your bitter failures. But I see faithfulness, and as a mother takes the soiled and perfect work of her child and invests it with perfection because of the sweet love, so I take your poor faithlessness, your poor faithfulness, and I crown it with perfection. For in your imperfection, I am made perfect. In your weakness, I am made strong. In your poverty, I am made rich in giving you all wisdom and knowledge of who I am. <laughs> In my weakness, you always make me strong. All I want to do now is praise you all day long. In a shadow, you flood me with your light. To give you pleasure is now my one delight. Since I opened up, opened up the door. I can't think of anything else but Jesus anymore. That's kind of a fun song. I think it was a love song. Since I opened up. It might be Benny Hester, but I'm pretty sure it's a love song. <laughs> Gets too confused. But, you know, you don't know until you go there, really, what God will have in store for you. And though you may at times prosper, don't be afraid of poverty. And though you may be impoverished, don't be afraid to prosper. The reality of what God wants to do with you is to take you through all aspects of life that you would have a fullness of life, a completeness to the reality of what His heart is like in filling your heart with His love.